Before we get going with any of the questions and hijinks this week on the show, I know you have another update. I think it's our second update now on this subject. Oh, this is constant now. And by the way, this would this is technically because uh, it was sent to the corny drive through at gmail.com account that we have. So even though we're doing some cross promotion here, I just want to say I have never in the past 25 years since it happened one time on, on one television program. I've never heard so much about my affiliation with the legendary Mantar as I have over the last six months, maybe six months to a year. People tweet the the image or the clip. It's everywhere. Hey, well, you know, and, and, you know, everybody's told a story at this point. I yes, I, I guess it was a rib on me. Or potentially maybe they did want to take him seriously and push him. And so they said it's a, at the sperm of the moment at the last minute, I'm, I'm like if, if, literally five minutes before he goes out, this cornet, you're managing Mantar. I ah, shit. All right. And I go out and that, that was the, maybe they saw that match and they said, no, we can't do this to cornet. I don't know. Um, but it we've heard so much, right? So here a couple and, and, uh, he was in the Omaha, uh, Nebraska, uh, not the Omaha, Nebraska. It is statewide for the Nebraska Wrestling Hall of Fame, right? <laughs> they they go they go border to border out there in the uh, in the Nebraska area. Um, That's right. But anyway, he's in the Nebraska Hall of Fame. We reacted to that, and then we, that's when we found out why Sting was in it because he was born in Omaha, Nebraska, and apparently, and so is Mantor. At least he lives out there for a good period of time. Ted DiBiase, Joe Dusick, Mantor. Yeah, it just, uh, you know, a classic, one of these things is not like the other picture. But anyway, then a guy on the experience a couple weeks ago sent in an email with his personal Mantar story based on an outlaw show that he had worked on from some guy that he obviously was not a huge fan of. The promoter took every opportunity to knock him. And <laughs> apparently there's more to the story. And we got another email with the, the 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 counterpoint to the previous emailer's point, which also involves Mantar, but presenting it from another slant. And before we before we read this email for the people who and why in the world are you listening to this program? You don't listen to the experience or vice versa. I really don't know. But if you didn't hear the experience where this uh, original email was read. We're going to play that clip, and then we're going to come back with the rest of the story. Well, this is an update about a show in Illinois. Um, its the subject is hilarious Mantar story, which had caught my eye. I'll let y'all be the judge of whether this story is hilarious or even has any basis in fact whatsoever. It could be mere fabrication. We have no idea. Do you think Stephen says I've got it covered by now? Because it's going to be slanderous. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Could be completely fabricated. We don't know. Hello, Mr. Cornett. I'm a big fan and love your podcast. I heard you talking about Mantar recently, and I have a hilarious story about him that you might find amusing. Well, first it was hilarious, and now it's merely amusing. In 2012, an acquaintance of mine from years ago who is one of the slimiest promoters you will ever see named Sean David Hubbard ran a show in Sterling, Illinois. I went to this show to hang out with some friends who were on the card and because Mantar was advertised for the show. Now, this show was a clusterfuck from the day that was announced because he first advertised 30 matches, which people called him stupid for doing, of course, and because of his reputation, the vast majority of them wouldn't show because they knew they probably wouldn't get paid LOL. The building in Sterling the show was at is a very nice building that can hold about four to 500 people when full. I say that because Hubbard did almost no ads for the show, only posters, and didn't even cover the entire town. No local radio or local TV, nothing. He also didn't have any money to pay the boys and planned to do it out of the house. The day of the show, I get there and it's all set up and look nice. We're waiting for Mantar to show up, and finally he pulls up and we meet him, and he was a really nice guy, sweet as can be. Hubbard comments that the fans will go nuts when they see him in the Mantar costume. <laughs> I don't know if nuts would be maybe the right word, but, and all of a sudden Mantar informs him that he doesn't do that gimmick anymore and hasn't in several years. <laughs> Hubbard, the genius he isn't, 
didn't check with him when he booked him to see if he would do the Mantar gimmick. Instead, he was doing a complete ripoff of Killer Kyle. <laughs> so what? Of Killer Kyle, I guess his <laughs> suit and the sunglasses, like a big bubba, you know. It, so no one recognized him. Also, the building that can hold several hundred people only drew 60 total because of the lack of advertising. At the end of the night, Hubbard informs the boys that he doesn't have the money to pay them because the show didn't make enough money. Mantar then gets visibly pissed and says, and I quote, you wait right here, you little shit, and I'm going to go get my gun, and when I get back, if you don't have my money, I'm going to shoot you. Now he's doing Jim Cornette. Yeah. <laughs> he, he then maybe i rubbed off on him at one night he then walked out of the building and me and a few other friends watched him literally get a pistol out of the glove box and load it and walk back in ready to shoot but by then hubbard had barricaded himself in one of the bathrooms with his then boyfriend's cell phone so he could call the cops to come save him have a great day and keep up the great work jake well what do you think was that was that hilarious or merely amusing? Merely amusing. Um, and by the way, as a follow-up from our Nebraska Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame story, apparently, even though he wasn't listed on the website, a lot of people jumped in and said the reason Sting would be in the Nebraska Hall of Fame is because he was born in Nebraska. I, I saw many of the same comments. A bunch of people said that. And on that, I call bullshit and shenanigans. Because I was there every night in those arenas, every night when Sting was advertised from Los Angeles, California, was it not? Or was it some kind of Sunset Beach or Muscle Beach or Venice Beach? Venice Beach. It was Venice Beach. That, which is right out next to Los Angeles. So it's all kind of in the same same part of the world there. And that what well, they've never been known to lie when they announce a, a wrestler from his hometown. So I think maybe the people in Omaha are just grasping at straws so you pr are you proud of mantar after hearing this story or <laughs> how do you feel <laughs> well I don't, now i may be mad at him for ripping off killer cow's gimmick which was me ripping off big bubba's gimmick he ripped off his gimmick but the whole i'm gonna get my gun anyway. and if you don't pay me i'm gonna shoot you that sounds well, a little more jim Cornette than killer kyle yeah but that that part's not unusual though on <laughs> Okay, that was what we read and said, and and as you re as you just heard, I said, "Hey, I believe it appears there's some who shot John going on here, if this is indeed factual, because there's a there's certainly more to this story, Brian." And I would like to read, and since we apparently gave his name before, we'll give his name now from Sean David Hubbard, who is the promoter that was just maligned in such a fashion by old uh, Jake. Greetings, gentlemen. Just wanted to take a moment to clear the air about things that were said on the January 8th, 2021 edition of the Jim Cornette Experience about myself. I booked an event for May of 2012 that was going to involve the help of other promoters as it was going to be a benefit, capital letters, event for the American Cancer Society. Originally, one of the other promoters told me he had landed us Hacksaw Jim Duggan, so I began advertising it only to learn the ink was not capital letters on the contract. So I acted quickly and began doing what I needed to do to save the event, which in turn we also lost Cowboy Bob Orton Jr. for this event because of a falling out he had with another one of the promoters involved. How many people were in on this promotional mud show gangbang? Um, <laughs> I was told by a wrestler, well, I'm right there. Those are six words that are uh, that always preface doom. I was told by a wrestler. I was told by a wrestler that Mantar would be returning to Raw for Raw 1000 and was even given falsified capital letters. So you know it's true if you put it in capital letters. Falsified documentation as such. How would you falsify documentation that you're going to be returning to Raw? Uh, uh, anyway, I guess there's people who would do that type of thing. Uh, falsified documentation as such. Thus, I booked Mantar for the aforesaid 2012 event. Mantar was to have been booked in Iowa on the night before this event, kind of doing a double shot. Yeah, that's kind of what that is. But that event was canceled, and Mantar demanded capital letters. More money when the original quote was $250. 
So obviously now Sean David Hubbard here is being penalized because of the fact that the promoter in Iowa, uh, apparently uh, Eb Dawson, didn't have his shit together. Uh, whatever his name was. And that'll turn out, yeah, it was old Eb. Um, didn't have his shit together and canceled. Now Mantar does not want to come for one day out in the woods for $250. So Sean continues, I told Mantar I'd do the best I could, but could not meet his demands. Mantar still showed up at the event and proceeded to tell me he would not, capital letters, be doing the Mantar gimmick per our agreement, as he did not, capitals, want to get into trouble with WWE. This was the first of many red flags to come up. The other was when one of my security guards said they allegedly saw him snorting some kind of substance in his car in the parking lot of the venue. He told me he would be working as the Turkish terror, Mad Mustafa. <laughs> Which. <laughs> a gimmick even less known than Mantar. Yeah. Well, most local guys from Omaha eventually switch over to being Turkish terrors, Brian. Anyway, <laughs> when Mantar arrived, I paid him $300 cash. Throughout the night, he demanded capitals. I pay him his demand even if it meant screwing the boys a pay completely. Advertising was done for this event, but not to the degree I'd done in the past or would do now, as one of the backers I had at the time was being stingy to the point that the agreement I had with said backer was not capitals, lived up to, thus there was not capitals enough money to pay the boys in full capitals, however capitals. Every guy or gal left with something capitals. And then apparently something gets skipped here because Mantar was removed from the building by the authorities after threatening to do physical harm to my mother and father who had nothing capitals to do with this situation at all. Due to his threats and not wanting to comply with our agreement, he was not capitals allowed to wrestle on the event. I don't ever recall seeing a gun or hearing anything about it, and it is my belief had the police known he had a gun, he may have been arrested for it. This is not something I am proud of by any means, but I wanted to set the record straight. Also want to debunk the fact that Mantar didn't do the Mantar gimmick anymore because I have found two examples of such and actually know both the promoters he used the gimmick with. He picks and chooses who he wants to use the gimmick with and whom he doesn't. He's got to protect the aura of Mantar. You got to be choosy and picky with something like that, Brian, don't you? To, to protect the the magical aura that surrounds that gimmick well the aura that surrounds that head that moose head or whatever it was <laughs> and he, it's he's so fat he's got his own gravitational pull he's being surrounded by meteors and planets oh and sean goes on as for jake his real name is nick devaney and he used to work with me at a company in illinois in 2009 what does that mean a company in illinois to like did they manufacture charmin toilet paper or what Anyway, Jake was also training but didn't make the cut but has lied to various people about himself being fully trained and going to places like Mexico to wrestle. Well, once again, there you go. If you've been to Mexico, you know what you're doing. And there, and then Sean includes links of matches of Mantar using the Mantar gimmick for other promoters after this event. So we know that is legitimate. Mantar will be Mantar sometimes. And and everybody, everybody loves a Mantar sometimes. Is this going to end it? Are we going to get more Mantar updates, you think? I don't, uh, we have not heard from the Mantar himself. <laughs> Would you allow Mantar to come on the show and talk about his point of view on this sniffing in the car and... <laughs> terrible turn i don't know we would well we would have to find out if he's some right-wing lunatic now you don't know who to trust we don't want to spread that kind of thing around but otherwise who knows all right well this is your show it is and you know perhaps mantar needs a good night's sleep perhaps that would help him with all of his problems well you know what it would it would aid anyone in their problems because studies are, have shown if you don't get a good night's sleep Eventually, you'll get old and die. And folks, you know, we've, we've talked about the, these fine people on the program here just recently on the experience. We're talking about them now on this program because it's so mandatory that you know that the folks from Helix Sleep are making the best darn mattress you've ever plopped your, your booty down on. I don't know if they, they like the idea of asses being plopped down on their 
there. But if you've ever plopped your booty down on it, it's the best one ever. And it's delivered right to your door. We talked the whole story about the unboxing. The miracle of the unboxing of the Helix Sleep uh, mattress is entertainment in itself. I'm surprised the, the videos don't go viral. You will shit yourself because they deliver a, 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 whatever size mattress you order in this box. What is it, Brian? Is it three feet long? And a maybe a foot, foot and a half square. And when you, it's shrink wrapped, it's vacuum packed. But when you follow the easy instructions, I didn't even screw it up and just whoosh, take all that stuff off of there. The mattress comes to full size life in front of you magically. And it's, it's, it's better. I was about to say as good. It's not, it's better than the ones you buy in a mattress store that you have to go over there, lay on stuff poke around, get somebody to sell you some stuff you don't need along with it, and then be delivered by two schlubs that are going to knock everything in your house over while they carry it up the stairs and put it where you need it. This way, you take it out of the box, put it on the bed, boom, it's done. And one human being can do this. As a matter of fact, that may be why Stacy's back is so bad. I told her, I said, you know, it, it, I'm joking. Uh, but anyway, here's what you do. Folks, you go to Helix Sleep, H E L I X, helixsleep.com, and you take a quiz. It takes you about two minutes to complete, but it matches your body type, your sleep preferences, the position you like on your back, on your side, whatever, to the perfect mattress that they have for you. They've got soft and medium and firm. They've got mattresses that cool you down if you. Sli I get sweaty and hot when you sleep. They've got the Brian. I, I used to be a, a candidate for this. I'm not anymore. But if you're portly, they've got a plus size folks mattress, Helix Plus. Whatever you need, they got. Take the quiz. They tell you which one you need, and there you go. Boom, and it's shipped right to your door for free. And if you go to helixsleep.com slash JCE, take the sleep quiz. They match you to the mattress, which has a 10-year warranty, and you get it to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They even pick it up if you don't love it, but, but you'll, you'll still be asleep in three months when you get on this thing. And you get up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners helixsleep.com slash jce there's a couple of different offers they've got you can get up to 200 bucks and two free pillows so uh, brian you got one i got one they're insane why would why would you just go buy something that you know you have to go to a store for and have the the monroe brothers cart into your house when this is so easy Every single time you have just mentioned the word pillows, all I'm thinking is how badly I just want to jump into that Helix mattress right now and take a nap. Well, that's normally how you feel when we do these programs. But I've managed to keep you awake for the duration. It could be the topic of Mantar. That, that's true. I did kind of <laughs> did kind of bring you down beforehand. Well, did you have do you have questions? 